Welcome to this week's episode of Clinic Sports Center. I'm Greg Sutton, and as always, alongside me, David Shemansky. On tonight's show, we're going to start off with this past weekend's football game. It came down to the last 20 seconds. In studio, we've got Logan Carney, who's going to break down what happened at the end of that game and the implications of it for the rest of the season. You won't want to miss that. And as the hockey season continues to roll on, we have another hockey-heavy episode for you here tonight. As the women's hockey team traveled to Brown and played two-game series there, and the men had a two-game series in the Chloe Arena against Army. And after we talk about those games, later in the show we're going to have someone sit down with Luke Lynch to discuss not only last weekend's games, but also the games that are going to be upcoming for the men's hockey team this weekend. Who do they play, Greg? Uh, they're going to be playing Ohio State. One on the road at Ohio State and one at home again in the Colonial Arena. I'll be traveling to Ohio State tomorrow night to help cover the game. We're taking some pictures. So Logan Carney will be there uh, writing a little bit of a story on that. And back to that football game on Saturday, it was a big thing because the, the Colonials have been on a three-game losing streak ever since winning their homecoming game against the Virginia Military Institute 23 to 0. So as Sacred Heart came to campus on family weekend, they were going to be hoping to turn their reefs and fortunes around and bring it home a win for the fans. Yeah, they, they would look to do that. You know, it was, a, it was a great start to the non-conference part of the season, but now that they jumped into conference play, they've started to struggle. Could they turn things around this past weekend? Well, that's what they were hoping for, and they were hoping to be able to come back again with the family and the fans behind them to jump ahead of the Pioneers to get that colonial victory for the families that came back to support them this past weekend. So, as we see there, uh, the Colonials didn't quite do what they needed to. They dropped the game 21-14 to as in the last couple of seconds in the game, Kamal Whitaker picked off a, a, a throw from Jimmy Walker that was intended for uh, Tim Vecchio. Uh, and he took it back for a 19, or a touchdown, a pick six, I should say. Uh, and the Colonials ended up losing that game, sadly. 21 to 14 during family weekend so that losing streak was extended to a fourth game and they will be hoping to once again come back next weekend and get the win for the Colonials fans. So now I'm here joined with Logan Carney. Welcome to the studio and uh, I'm looking forward to discussing this game. We didn't get to see the highlight there but what happened at the end of the game was 20 seconds left uh, interception thrown. It was a tie game. They weren't across midfield. You know, what was their what was their hope there? Were they trying to go down the field there to get a game winning field goal? We saw it Biseglia kick one earlier in the season. Was that the hope? You know, that that's that's what I guess they were going for. because, uh, you know, in college football they get the first down stops the clock. I mean so if they can get down in the other side of the field then maybe they can give it. But there's twenty seconds left. They got the ball about the twenty five yard line. This isn't Madden. You know, you don't try and do that in real football. You run the clock out, with you run the ball. Maybe, maybe Dreyer breaks off for a big run and gets a touchdown, you win the game that way. Maybe. But the, the, what I think they should have done is just run out and go into overtime because with the way their offense was playing that game, I mean, they, they couldn't score in the red zone. So the way their offense was playing, there's, there's no way that they were going to get down the field with 20 seconds left. Personally, I mean, I just, on my opinion, they made the wrong call. Um, I admire John Banizak for going for it. I think you know that's really impressive. You know, there's a lot of coaches in the NFL with in college football where they do go for it and they do end up being successful. And if he was successful, we're going to have a completely different story today. But on my personal decision, they should have just ran the ball, ran the clock. Right. So, so, so what you're saying is they should go, they should take a knee, and then they go into overtime. So with the way that the game was unfolding, do you think that had they gone into overtime, they end up with that win? I think they definitely would have had a better chance. I mean, their defense was playing great, their special teams was playing great. And their offense wasn't playing that, you know, wasn't playing that good. Their defense had the block kick, they had the fumble and the punt, um, they had the kick return for a touchdown, uh, the special team, sorry, the kick return for a touchdown. So, you know, there's no saying, you know, their defense shut them down within the red zone. Five, ten yards, they shut them down twice. You know, they definitely could have, they definitely could have won in overtime. Would they have? I don't know. Could they have? Definitely. So, as I said earlier in the show, you know, the non-conference performance to start the season was pretty good. They got a few wins early, and it, was, it looked like it was going to be one of the best seasons for Coach John Banizak. And I know he's not the one out there making the plays, but at some point, he's got to take responsibility when the team loses. So, if you're John Banizak, how hot is your seat right now? Well, it's... I mean, it's what, 40 degrees outside? It's about twice as hot as that, you know? It's, it's, it's really hot. His seat's on fire, if I had to say, because... You know, they've only lost 
two games that they should have won. I mean, they, they, they weren't going to beat Duquesne. They weren't going to beat North Dakota State. They weren't going to beat Youngstown State. But they definitely should have won last week. They definitely should have beat East Tennessee State. And they should definitely have a winning record right now. Um, it's, it's his fourth year. They still have yet to produce a winning season with more than, you know, they haven't had a season where they've won more than three games. And, you know, I, at the beginning of the year, said that they'd end up finishing in the top three. And I was very outspoken about that because I love the defense and everything. And now, you know, I, I really can't see this team, you know, placing in the conference. Right. That's top three at right. all. Right. Well, we'll see how they do this weekend, and uh, we'll pay attention to how John Banizak does. But thank you for joining us, Logan. Of course. Uh, and we'll, we'll hope to have you on later in the uh, show. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> the Colonials had a difficult start to the season, but since they've begun conference play, they have seemingly turned into a different team. Conference opponent Long Island Brooklyn hosted the men this past Saturday in one of their last games of the season. This late in the year, we expect to see the best of both teams, and we certainly did. To Brooklyn we go for the highlights of the men's soccer game. We're going to see a great kick out of the goal by Winter Fondy there. A couple of back-to-back -back headers here. And as LIU thinks they have the ball, they'll pass it to the middle. But there'll be a turnover there. There'll be a ball handling stretched down the middle. A pass there to the middle. Bailey Winkle on the shot. And a goal! And wow. a great goal by Bailey Winkle yet again. He's really starting to light up the uh, light up the lamp there. Every uh, week, season. you know, I would have said that, that you know that was surprising, but I knew that Bailey Winkle was going to be part of this highlight package today. Absolutely, and that's his ninth did. goal of the season, actually. Just to throw a quick stat in there, and as we see there, another great save by Winter Fond. He's also been doing really well this season, in in between the pipes there on the soccer pitch. Yeah, off the post, and he got it out of the area pretty quick. Good defense by the. And goal, here we'll yeah. see a corner kick from Rasmus Hansen that will go in front of the net. And Winter Fondy once again with another amazing save, and that will help to keep the Colonials up to one to nothing, and that will be the end of the game for LIU versus Robert Morris, and that's going to be the win. So senior midfielder Bailey Winkle thrived yet again, as we said, against LIU Brooklyn, as his goal in the second half was enough to cage up the Blackbirds. Uh, Winkle now has nine goals in the season and is hoping to take the victory over the NEC leading LIU Brooklyn team to carry them to the playoffs. And now we're going to jump real quick into the standings for the men's soccer team. And as we see here, St. Francis Brooklyn's on top of the list there, as Robert Morris is in sixth place. They are. And you know, I know that it was a tough start to the season for Robert Morris outside of conference. So the 2-2-1 two, two and one record is not terrible. They've got seven points. And if they can win, you know, their last few games that they've got here, you know, they can move up. And I know that they don't have a chance to win the conference but they've got a chance to do pretty well. Absolutely, and that's all you can hope for at, at this point in the season as Bailey Winkle's starting to thrive. They need a little bit more little bit more support behind him because he's about the only player that we've been talking about consistently. So that's going to be a big part is helping Bailey Winkle out in the goal scoring aspect of the game. So let's look at their schedule for the rest of the season now. And as we see here, this Sunday, they'll be playing the, Saint, or the Sacred Heart University Pioneers uh, at Robert Morris, and then they're going to be playing at St. Francis University or St. Francis College. Right, and so now we're going to jump to a break here pretty soon. And when we come back, we're going to get right into the hockey talk. Four games to talk about. Absolutely, that hockey-heavy episode is going to come into play here in this second, uh, this second part of the show. Absolutely, we'll see you after the break. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. There's a even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Oh, emojis! I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. 
She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up that hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane! can't mess with Texas. So donate now to help make Texas whole again. Back to this week's episode of Colonial Sports Center. And now, before anything else, we're going to jump right into that hockey we were talking about earlier in the show. We've got four games. This past weekend, while the men's hockey team was at home, the women's hockey team hit the road to Rhode Island to take on the Ivy League powerhouse, the Brown Bears. These games would be the first of the season for them. For the Colonials, it would be their fifth. Let's go to the highlights from Providence. And here we jump in. Colonial's up early, 1-0. Tenth team in the country, you can see there on the scoreboard. And Amber, Amber Renee with her uh, goal right there. That's her, uh, that puts the Colonial's up 2-0. And now we see they're already up 3-0. This is going to be a shorthanded goal right here, Greg, by Emily Curloy. It didn't look shorthanded at all. I mean, now they're up to 4-0. Four, four it doesn't look like they're short at all in this, uh, in this game so far, David. No, and here we go. We jump 6-0. This game is turning into a blowout. And right here is another goal to put them up 7 no nothing. And as I always like to quote my favorite announcer, Doc Emmerich, once your car gets beyond four tires, you can always take a blowout. <laughs> right. And here goes Amber Renee with her uh, second goal of the game, 10th goal for the Colonials. And I'll tell you what, it does not take an Ivy League education to know that 10 beats 0. Absolutely. And especially whenever you're in Ivy League school, you don't want to come out and lose to a D1 NEC team or AHC team as they just did there. No, and this was a game of shots for the Colonials. Well, Levin found the back of the net. They totaled 56 shots through the night. Three Colonials had more than one goal. Amber Rene, who I mentioned in the highlight, Brittany Howard, and Emily Curley. And while this was a night of great offense, Elijah Minley Price stopped all 22 shots from Brown to complete the shutout. After the combined efforts of eight different Colonials in the, game, in the first game versus the Brown Bears, scoring a total of 11 goals, Robert Morris was hoping not to only sweep the weekend series, but to keep the goal-scoring train alive. After the final horn sounded, the Colonials tickled the twine for a total of three goals, the first of which coming from, an, from no other than Brittany Howard on a shorthanded opportunity. Amber Rene and Natalie Frazier both scored in the third period to boost the Colonials over the Bears and sweep the weekend series in Providence, Rhode Island. Back at home this past weekend was the men's hockey team. They hosted Army University, who coming into the weekend was unbeaten on the year. Typically early in the season, games do not have many implications for playoffs. But with Army being a fellow conference opponent, the Colonials, uh, this two-game series was as important as any will be all season. Could the Colonials hand Army their first loss of the season? To the rink we go. This was just an exciting game to be at, David, the past Friday night. I was there, and there was a lot of energy from the crowd, which I liked. Right, and there's the second goal of the game by Luke Lynch right there. He's in the studio. We're going to get to talk to him later, but what a goal. Watch this. He just goes top shelf. And there's nothing better than going top shelf on a goalie to put, the put your own team up by a couple of goals. And here we're going to see Army, a uh, little... Uh, Good, good fortune for them. They're going to get a goal there to, to, to only be down one. But here, Army is on the power play, but it won't look like that if you watch this highlight with the goal right there, top left. That was Brady Ferguson on the shorthanded goal. And like, I, like as we always say, there's no way you can hide the cookies on the top shelf from the Colonials. They'll always reach up there and grab them no matter what. That's right. That's right. And we got to see that one more time right there. And here we go into the third period where Luke Lynch will have his second goal of the game, and it will be the final goal of the game as the Colonials will win this one 4-2. to Army is no longer undefeated, and the Colonials took the first game of the series, 4-2. to Luke Lynch led the way with two goals. And as we know, Luke Lynch is always a good performer on ice, putting the, goal, putting the pucks into the back of the net and uh, really contributing to the team to help boost the Colonials up over no matter what opponent they're playing. Right, and we'll get to talk to him later in the show. Absolutely. And... 
as we like to keep going, uh, the second game of the series between Army and Robert Morris happened ne just in the next day. And after a win over the Army Black Knights, the Colonials were going to hope to boost themselves up over the Knights yet again in the second game. And now we're going to jump right into the game two of the series of the weekend on Saturday during family weekend. First, Army's going to start here. They're going to put in a lot of work here on the crease and get rewarded for their hard work as number as they score, as a goal scored by Michael Wilson with assists from John Zimmerman and Dominic Franco. And that's just a lot of hard work and that's how you score goals whenever you're, whenever you're trying to start a game is you gotta put in the hard work in the crease and you always, you eventually get rewarded for them. And now the second one is gonna be a great shot, a great save and a great rebound also, but a goal this time, but once again, Luke Lynch, who is on fire, who was on fire this past weekend with uh, tickling the twine. And now Army's gonna come back, a little bit of puck handling there. It's gonna go down low behind the net, pass out front and a quick, little shot, but Francis Murat will make the save there, and another another miraculous save by Murat. Yeah, yeah, he's been good. I was at that game. He looked great all night. And now Army's going to come back on the attack again with the score being 1-1, and go into the back of the net with the goal there to put themselves up 2-1. Here we're going to see it slow down a little bit. It'll go coast, almost coast to coast, and a quick little wrist shot from just above the faceoff circle to put the Black Knights up 2-1. And as the game as the final buzzer sounded, it was a hard-fought battle for the Colonials, but they dropped the game three goals to one, despite having 11 more shots on goal than Army. The single goal for the Colonials was scored by Luke Lynch. It was his third goal of the weekend. Look, look for more from him going forward in the season. During family weekend, Robert Morris Volleyball squared up against LIU Brooklyn and was looking to start the climb back to 500 in conference play. After losing the past four in a row, the Colonials would, look, would be looking to Emma Granger and Maria Alfano to help them start the journey back. Now, David, this was a great set, or a great match between the Colonials, and they really put forth all of their effort, and they won, this, they won the match 3-1. to one. Yeah, and you know, when you... Win a set three to one. You know that means that you you do you you dominated it. You know you, you didn't have to go to that fifth set, that shortened fifth set, and it was uh, it was a great win for the volleyball team. Absolutely, and it's also a very well deserved win after going four games without a win. Yeah, yeah, it was a way to end their cold streak. Absolutely. Last time Robert Morris played St. Francis Brooklyn, they lost three games to one in a contest that the Colonials were certainly the favorite. Following that loss, the Colonials dropped to two more in a row. This game had many implications for their, for their conference standings, as well as their season momentum. To the rematch. And here we go, Colonials against the Terriers, and right here, this first play, Emma Granger, the freshman standout right there with the point. And watch this one. Watch the finesse that they're going to put on this. You think they're going for the spike, but nope. Nope. Drops it right Nothing in. Nothing trickier than a little, 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 little lob shot over the top to get the point. Right. Just phenomenal. But now the Colonials get right back into their aggressive play. They're up there blocking shots. Here they're going to put a, forth a big spike that uh, the, their opponents cannot block and they're going to take that set as we head to the third set they're looking to close it out with the sweep three nothing but they won't they are going to drop that set so now being up 2-1 they've got to be worried about going to that fifth set so here in the fourth set watch them get aggressive this is a big spike that unfortunately finds the the face of the opponent and uh, not only the face but the back line opponent there was so scared it was coming through that she dove and there was no ball within her reach she did and that was the end of that highlight they win Three sets to one. Which is, a, which is an exciting thing, considering they had lost those four in a row, and now they've won back-to-back. -back. So that's a lot of momentum for the Colonials going into the rest of their season uh, with that, like, those back-to-back -back wins on, on their schedule. Absolutely. Now I'd like to look at the volleyball standings, Greg. So what do you, what do you see up on the graphic? Well, what I'm seeing is that Robert Morris is 5-4, and four, which is a great, great way to sit with just a couple matches left in the season. I mean, they don't have, I, they might have a chance if a lot of things go right to come up into first, but uh, Robert Morris is in a decent position right now at the end of the season. They certainly are. So we're gonna jump to commercial, but when you come back, you're gonna get to see Luke Lynch talk about last weekend's games against Army that you got to see the highlights of, and also this upcoming weekend with two games against Ohio State. Absolutely, come on back to see Luke Lynch sitting down with our very own Delen Poe. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere.
the words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness. And so are you. Oh, emojis! I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you! She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> How about that? Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane! Tonight, along the Texas Gulf Coast Auto Devastation, Harvey barrels ashore over by packing 130 mile an hour winds, blinding sheets of rain, and the treacherous storm surge. Harvey can't mess with Texas. So donate now to help make Texas whole again. And welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. I'm here with Luke Lynch. And thank you for coming to sit down with me today. Yep. So, as we saw in the highlight, you scored three times this weekend against Army. What, what was working for you, and what can we expect scoring wise for you the rest of the season? Uh, this weekend, it was definitely just a, a lot of hard work from everybody on the team. I had a uh, to name a couple guys, uh, Elias Gontus, Daniel Mantenuto, Matt Graham, uh, Spencer Dorwitz, they all set me up for my goals this weekend. So, I mean, if they can keep setting me up, then hopefully I can keep scoring. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yep, absolutely. So, you currently lead the team in goals. Uh, how does that make you feel knowing that your brother Zach, who is one of the all time greats at RMU? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely proud of all the things that he did here at RMU, but. Uh, just uh, trying to be my own player. I think we play the game a lot different than, than each other, and you know, I just try to do what I can to help the team win day in and day out. And speaking of your brother, he plays for the Manchester uh, Monarchs currently. How was that growing up with both of you playing hockey? Uh, it was awesome. You know, we would always we would eat, sleep, and breathe hockey together, and we'd always push each other to be better, better whether it was playing in the basement or playing on the ice together. So. You know, it was just great having a bigger brother and role model like that. And knowing that he was here at RMU before you were, and now that you are becoming your own person, how was that hard for you coming in at the first, knowing that you were the Zach's brother? Yeah, the senior class last year used to joke and just uh, tell me my last name was brother, first name Zach's. But, uh, you know, I just, I just came in with the mentality that I was going to be my own person, be my own player, and just see where it takes me and just do the best I can. So you share the ice with Jacob Coleman uh, here at RMU and you also played with him with the Pittsburgh Hornets in 2011-2012. What is different now that you're in college and how do you think both of you will grow as players in the next couple of years? Uh, ba from back then I think definitely we've both grown as players and as people from you know like being 15-16 we were playing together and uh, now the game's a lot harder, a lot faster, and you gotta just play better. And you can't ever take a day off. And I think we uh, feed off each other that way. We uh, both practice really hard, and you know we've always been really good buddies. And it's nice to be able to joke around with a guy on the team. And he's definitely one of the guys that I can do that with. So your first five games were in conference, which is a very unique situation. Walk us through the mindset, the training that the team had to go through, knowing that there was a fight right ahead of you. Right, uh, having the conference games at the beginning of the season right, right there, you know, every, every point in conference is a huge point, so uh, we were preaching in the preseason that we needed to come out strong at the beginning of the year and have a good start, and, you know, I think we've started out strong, but uh, I think there's a couple points we let slip away that we needed to have. Well, thank you for coming to talk to me. I'm going to send it back to David and Greg. 
and a great interview over there by Delenn Poe with Luke Lynch. Now, from the ice to the pitch, the Robert Morris women's soccer unit looked to get a couple of wins in, under their belt before the end of the season. This task proved to be a tough one, considering they were playing the fairly Dickinson Knights, who are undefeated in NEC play. And we're going to start off here with another great goalie reel here, uh, but this time it's going to be Sydney Bruckner, the attendee for the women's soccer club. I mean, every time I watch a women's soccer highlight, it feels like Sydney Bruckner is making all sorts of saves, but that wasn't. Holy cow, that one was just in between the top, like just below the bar and just, just left of the other one. That's an amazing shot there. And that shot was by Christina Kelly. And from here on, we're basically going to be another highlight reel of Sydney Bruckner which is an amazing thing because with her doing so well in net, that just leaves the Colonials to only thrive with her behind them. And unfortunately there, she does let up a goal, uh, but that's the, it's going to send it into overtime. So we're going to see LIU try to fight downfield, but it will go in, and the game-winning goal was scored by Jane Schleicher. What a goal. Nothing more exciting than overtime in soccer. Absolutely. And it went into double overtime, not just one, but it took two, double, like, two overtimes for the Colonials to finally triumph over the Knights. And so, as we, like I said, the Colonials did triumph over the Knights 2-1 to one, with Jane Schleicher's game-winning goal in the second overtime period in the 106th minute. But the next game of the weekend was against Mount St. Mary's, and that was also another big game. It was big because it was senior night. It would be the last game that the woman would play here on their home field if they were a senior. And it was a 4 nothing victory for the Colonials, and two seniors scored goals. Uh, Malaya Kershey scored a goal as well as Aaron Ritzer. She had the last goal and it was also assisted by a senior, Kasha Bach. And absolutely, and I imagine all the seniors were honored with a great ceremony they had after the game. But we're going to send a break real quick and when we come back, as always, we're going to finish out the show with a little bit of the upcoming games. Come on back. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. There's a if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Oh, emojis! I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up the hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane. Texas. So donate now to help make Texas whole again. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. And before we let you go tonight, let's talk about the upcoming games this Absolutely. weekend. Absolutely. And this is always my favorite part of the show because we can see where the Colonials are playing and who they're playing in this next coming week. So, uh, the We've most got the schedule game. up there, Greg. Pick a game. Let's talk about it. Okay, so my favorite game this weekend is definitely the football at St. Francis at noon. It's a big game. They're 0-2 in the conference, like we heard Logan talk about earlier. John Banizak, it's going to be a very important game for not only the team this season, but his legacy overall. Absolutely, and I, especially after the last season where we were all kind of like, is he going to stay, is he going to go? Uh, and after he did very well in the beginning of the season this season, 
and started to fall off a little bit. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how he can finish out this football season and hopefully save his career here at Robert Morris. Yes, and then we've also got those two men's hockey games that we talked about. And for all of you Colonial fans, if you can make it out on Saturday night, it is a whiteout against Ohio State. Uh, and you get to see Luke Lynch, the leading goal scorer, in action. Absolutely. That's definitely going to be a big weekend for hockey and football. So like we always like to say, thank you for tuning in this week. And we'll see you next week, and you can figure out how all of those games unfolded this, this weekend. Absolutely. Good night.